Ah, Cyrus. One of the few, I would say, deaths, and actual real deaths in Pokemon is what I mean. And the guy who ended my last Nuzlocke run. I decided this time I'd be a better version of him and destroy him and take over Sinnoh by becoming champion. So here's how I went! If you're not familiar with the hardcore Nuzlocke rules, it cranks up the difficulty of Pokemon from normal to, well, hardcore, lol. <laughs> Basically, how it works is if a Pokemon faints, it's dead and box forever. It limits the amount of Pokemon I can catch, though it doesn't matter in this run too much. Though it is still extremely difficult due to level caps, no items in battle, and we play in set mode only. I can use other Pokemon for HMs though, and I'll have an extra rule for the first gym, which I'll mention later, if you can tell just by the Pokemon I'm gonna get at the start. Before we start, it would mean a lot if you guys subscribe, it's free, and you can unsubscribe anyway whenever you want, and leave a like if you like the video, comment what you want to try to see next. So to start off, I use the Universal Pokemon Randomizer, because I replaced Chimchar with Murkrow so I start the run with it. I did this because you can't catch Murkrow and Platinum, and I thought Empoleon would be the hardest starter to deal with. I tried saying no to Rowan this time, but he wouldn't listen, so I just said yes to get the Pokemon. Anyways, I named my Murkrow Donna. It had the Super Luck ability, and I honestly hope that would be really useful, because I thought it would be pretty cool. The starter rival was nothing to mention other than a bunch of growling, so let's just skip that. The first rival battle after Jubilife City was a stomp, to be honest. Murkrow levels up so fast and does so much damage in the early game, two episodes to down Starly, and it took longer to take Piplup down because honestly it just kept growling again and again for some reason. I then caught the Zubat in Orberg Gate, named it Zazu for some reason. I wanted to go with Dick, but uh, whoops. <laughs> its nature was quiet. Now here's a special rule for this gym. I looked up levels and moves and strats, but to be completely honest with you, I just couldn't defeat Rourke without straight up running into him over and over and over and over again. So the special rule for this one is I can save scum and if a Pokemon faints you can use it but only for this one gym because it is near impossible without luck. So finally after about one hour of save scumming, I beat Rourke with some confused luck, flinch luck, and yes, Zubat went down but the special rule does still apply here. Next, I completely forgot I could get a Magikarp before I even went to Rourke, but um, wouldn't have made a difference anyway. So I went back to Jubilife City to get the old rod and caught myself a Magikarp and named it Tim. Does anyone see where I'm going with this? It had a naive nature. My next battle was at Valley Windworks, and I did so much switch training here to get Magikarp to evolve into Gyarados, and I maximized it by EV training as much as I possibly could. Because, to be honest with you, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be my main damage dealer when I get some hoops. Now, the Valley Windworks fight. Technically speaking, I had two Pokemon because Zubat is still really weak, so I led with Murkrow and used Wing Attack, barely leaving Zubat alive, taking it down with a second. Next is Perugly. It got two attacks off because of Astonish flinching, and it left me at half HP after Scratch, and I was afraid of a Night Slash crit, but I completely forgot Perugly doesn't have Night Slash. But I switched to Gyarados because of high HP, and Gyarados bites it down to size. Okay, so that was a pretty good fight, but it's making me think that we probably can't lose Gyarados because we're gonna use him to take down the big guns. We get to Eternal City where Steve takes us to the, uh... But honestly, what, what even is this statue? It looks like Dialga, but it looks like Palkia. Is it like a combination of this thing? Like, what is this? But anyway, we see Cyrus, the fake Cyrus anyway, but he's just staring at the statue. Before we got to the Eternal Gym, as usual, we did some leveling and evolved Zubat into Golbat. The Eternal Gym, as you might have guessed with my team, or Cyrus's team actually, was an easy fight, with three flying types and two of them knowing flying type moves, so here's how it went. I put Murkrow out first so we can get rid of Turtwig being annoying with setup moves, and I take it out in one hit with a super luck power critical wing attack. Next is Cherim, which is left with a bit of health after a wing attack, and because I know gym leaders will always go for a heal here if they have one, I go for Nightshade, because that way I can just one shot with a wing attack afterwards. Finally, Roserade goes down in a single wing attack. Next off, I go to the commander battle in the Galactic Turner building, and I lead with Golbat against Zubat, using Confuser and wing attack to take it down. I switch to Gyarados to intimidate the Skun Tank, which actually has a Night Slash this time, and then I switch to Murkrow to not take much damage due to typing, and I take it down with a wing attack. I go to the cave under Cycling Road, and then my Golbat evolves into Grobat. Finally, <laughs> I've been walking around for ages for this. And I also get the Dust Stones and then use it on Murkrow to evolve into Harchkrow, I get Earthquake, which I put on Gyarados immediately, and I'm not the type to hold grudges, but I made sure to beat down the Hiker who exploded my Gibble last run with some Earthquakes. 
Heart Home Gym, once again, this one is pretty easy. We've got three Pokemon with dark type moves. I start with the Crobat and Bite. I get a flinch and it's a free kill. So he switches to Miss Maggie straight away. And I use Confuse Ray to buy time and it hits itself. And I use Bite, which makes her use the Berry. I switch to Gyarados for more power and defeat in one bite. And the next is Haunter, and I want to share the XP, so I switch to Haunch Crow. And uh, I fall asleep, but um, I switch back to Gyarados and just bite it down. So the next rival fight. I already know how this goes, so I try to use Confuse Rate to stop it if using Endeavor Quick Attack combo. But unfortunately, it still gets an Endeavor off, so I have to switch over to Gyarados and use Bite to get an easy kill. And then he switches out to Ponyta, and it goes down to Earthquake. Print Flop, however, takes two Earthquakes, but no big deal as of yet. So I go out to Veilstone City and start using all my money to buy coins, which I'm going to use later to get some TMs. I caught a Houndor for our fourth Pokemon and named it Cats. It had a calm nature. And if you kind of know where I'm going with this, it doesn't really match, but whatever. So I evolve Hound Doom, and then I go straight to the Veilstone Gym after some EXP and some training, you know the drill. So when I got there, I forgot my Hound Doom was in first, so I switched to Crobat straight away, as I know Metatite can't do anything, and Wing Tank easily takes it down. Matro comes in, and I'm scared of Rock Tomb, so I use Confuse Ray and it hits itself. I use Air Carter and it crits to take it down. So he switches to Lucario, so I stay into Confuse Ray and switch to Gyarados to take him down with an Earthquake. But it lives with a Sliver, so I use Dragon Breath and it goes down. Does Malian not have any potions? So nothing much happens in between here and the next gym, so I have another battle with our rival. I taught Houndoom Thunderfang and lead against our Arabia and crit taking it down. Though I don't know if I needed the crit. Up next is our Prinplup and I switch to Gyarados and use Thunder, taking it to low HP and finishing it with Bite. Rosalia comes out and dies to Earthquake, same with Bonita, nothing much to mention there. So I reach Crash Awake and I lead with Crobat. I use Confuse Ray and he uses Waterfall to get me to half HP and I'm a little scared here. So I use Fly hoping to do some damage and get the Soothe Bell off so I can protect myself and it crits but he breaks Infusion. And then I hit Fly which heals me. I use Cross Poison hoping to crit and poison and it poisons. So I use Protect to buy some time and then I switch to Honshiro to use Wing Attack to take it down. Wake sends out Floatzel next, so I switch to Gyarados as it knows Ice Fang and my whole team is either weak to water or ice. And Tim is the only one that's neutral. So I use Thunder, which makes it use his berry, and I'm a little scared to use it again because of the mischance, so I use Earthquake and it goes down. Quagsire is last, and I use Aqua Tail to bring it down to half. And I'm kind of thinking about switching here, but I know Quagsire is a tank, and honestly Gyarados is my best damage dealer. So I hit it again even after the rock tomb slow because I'm confident I'm still faster and luckily enough I was and I take it down. And at this point I'm realizing Gyarados is slowly taking up the show at the halfway point of the run. Alright Celestic Town, I fight myself for the first time. I lead with Houndoom against his Sneasel and though my attack isn't very good, Firefang easily took it down. He switches to Murkrow, so I switch to Gyarados to use Thunder and I finish it with Ice Bang. Golbad comes out last, and I use Ice Fang again, leaving it at half, and it does some damage to Gyarados, but I easily take it out. So before the Candlelight Rival fight, I decided to get some items for Celestic Town, specifically the Choice Specs, Wise Glasses, and Black Glasses, and at some point, I teach Gyarados Thunderbolt. Okay, so to start off the Candlelight fight, he sends in Storabia, and I have Gyarados going in with the Choice Specs Thunderbolt, easily taking it down. And I want to use other moves, so I switch in Crobat into his Rapidash, and it hits me with a critical hit takedown, which is kind of scary because it hit half my HP. So I use Confuse Ray hoping that it doesn't do it again, and it's a crit so it's fine. So it hits itself twice, and I use Cross Poison to knock it out. In comes Heracross, so I use Confuse Ray and it hits a Nice Slash. Luckily though it doesn't crit, and I use Fly to do times 4 damage. He sounds out Empoleon, so I send in Gyarados again to counter with Earthquake, bringing it to just a sliver, but we eventually knock it out without much issue. Last in is Rose Raid, and again, this guy does nothing. I might do a Rose Raid or Grass Sniper run at this point just to see, to be honest. So, Rourke's dad is up next, the Candlelave Gym. For this one, my main concern was honestly just not being able to one-shot his team, because his whole team had super effective moves against fire or flying types, so I was really afraid because they're really strong but really slow. So who do I choose? Houndoom or Gyarados? That was my main question. Is it Houndoom with Choice Specs, or is it Gyarados with Earthquake Soft Sand? I chose Houndoom at the end, mainly because I wasn't sure if Gyarados could one-shot Basiodon, and to be honest, I'd rather lose Houndoom than Gyarados in the long run. And plus, if it gets a burn, it could mean it's not a one-shot anymore on us. 
So, here we go. Starting with Magneton, I one-shot it with a Flamethrower, steal like his next, and it does the same thing. And Bastiodon, the tank, comes in. Flamethrower does just a bit more damage in half, healing with its berry, and then it misses Stone Edge. So this is my chance. Here I am with Flamethrower choice specs on the Houndoom. And to be honest, I didn't know about Metronome at this point, which I'm pretty sure would've been better, but this is it. I'm really hoping for range here, and I get it. It goes down, and we win against Rourke's dad. Like, I really thought we could lose here. Then, after the gym, I take a look at our team for the next part of the game and just see what we got. So we have Honchkrow, and it feels like it's kind of fallen off at this point, and same with Crobat, though it does have some utility and stalling power to confuse Ray, Protect, and Fly, but Houndoom and Gyarados are huge carries of the team right now in damage. I can't wait to try out Revile though when I get it, because I've never used one. So we're skipping Commanders again, because we're doing the Team Galactic part of this run, because it's pretty easy, and nothing really crazy happened. We finally can get our last Pokemon now though at this point, we can't evolve it until the Galactic HQ, so it's still going to be a Sneasel for quite a while. I've never used them before, but I know they're pretty fast and have pretty good attack. I caught one and named it Barb, it had a hasty nature. So before the gym, I actually did a lot of training to get to level 44, because our team, if you haven't noticed, is heavily weak to ice, or does not have good moves against ice, except for Houndoom and Gyarados. But this is where the magic happened. At level 44, Gyarados learns an amazing move, Dragon Dance. So what I ended up doing is setting up against Sneasel, because I know it can't damage me too much, and I get 3 off. Sneasel got Gyarados to above half, but I doubt it'll mean anything as I one-shot Sneasel and Pillow Swine. Then I get a critical hit on a Bomb of Snow with Ice Fang, and I'm not sure if I needed it, I probably did, but I'm gonna gladly take it. So here comes Frostlass. I don't have any super effective moves, and I decide to use Aqua Tail, which does have a chance of missing, plus Frost has the ability for evasion in Snow, which is what Obama Snow did in the previous turn, so I'm a bit scared here, but I luckily take it down, and I beat down Candice with just one Pokemon, I never even had to use Houndoom. So I went to the lake, and uh, apparently our rival failed, sadly enough. So I had to chase down Cyrus with Galactic HQ. First of all, I sent out Gyarados to do what I did against Candice and set up a Dragon Dance. I take down Sneasel with an Earthquake, and then Crobat comes out, and I use Ice Fang to take it out. Same with Honchkrow, it goes down to a single Ice Fang. And at this point, he's not too much trouble, because he only has 3 Pokemon, so it's pretty good. But at this point, I was really excited and I looked for the Razor Claw because I knew there was one at the Galactic HQ, which lets me evolve Sneasel into Weavile. Or the Weavile, I don't know. Which I promptly do against the Eevee Collector. Next place we go is Spear Pillar. At this point, all I was thinking about was how did he even make the chains to summon Pocky and Dialga in the first place? I really don't understand. But anyways... We get to Cyrus, and we don't have Thunderbolt anymore, which is now a big problem. Because it would be huge here against Gyarados, which is our main problem against his whole team, with our team. I completely just forgot to rebuy it again, so to be honest, this part was purely power, and throwing ourselves in at the right order with a lot of luck. So here's how it went. First of all, I send in Crobat against the Houndoom, and I use Confuse Ray and Cross Poison. My main goal here was just to chip him down quite a lot, but I actually take them down quite quickly. And the next one is Weavile. I switch into Houndoom because I can just use Flamethrower with Choice Specs here, and I know he can't one-shot me after getting me to half taking it down. Gyarados, the most troublesome one, I send in Crobat because I expect an Earthquake against my uh, Houndoom which is weak to ground, and my prediction was right. I confuse it and use Cross Poison to do more chip damage, but it gets Ice Fang off. It puts Crobat so low. I expected another Ice Fang, so I switched to Weavile, but I used Waterfall for some reason, making Weavile super low. I don't have a safe switch in here, and I know I'm faster, so I just go for the hit with a Never Melt Ice and high attack stats and take it down with an Ice Punch. Honchkrow was next, and I used Ice Punch again, easily knocking it out. And the same thing happened with Crobat. Although, at that point, I was a little bit afraid that Crobat was going to be faster than I was. Dude. I actually beat him. And to be honest with you, like I said before, it was complete luck on this. Well, maybe it was a bit of strategy, but there was so much luck as I had no way of really doing damage. 
so definitely take a note here bring more tms next time especially if i end up grinding money on the rich people i like 300,000 or just something crazy so i definitely could have caught an extra so Giratina is next, but here, no big issue. Honcho easily takes it down. I could have skipped it, but I just wanted to see more Honcho take down the Giratina. I ventured to the Sunny Sword Gym, and I've not been in this area for ages. It's actually such a cool area and such a cool gym. Though, at this point, like you guys would have noticed, I'm a little worried because my whole team, except for two, are weak to electric. My strongest being Gyarados, who has an Earthquake Dragon Dance combo, so... My strategy here was to use Dragon Dance once, and only once with the cherry berry to hopefully not get paralyzed all right so the first pokemon is jolteon and i'm pretty sure gyarados outspeeds but i just go for the dragon dance and hope for the best i go for the earthquake and i outspeed meaning that i'm pretty sure if i'm faster than jolteon i outspeed the whole team raichu gets one shot luxray goes down and electivire gets critical hit so wow Gyarados is able to destroy his entire team with a single Dragon Dance and an Earthquake. Dang. Now, before I went to Elite 4, I did some shopping. I bought a Metronome from the Veilstone Game Corner for move spamming. I got the Swords Dance team as well, and I taught that to Weavile, and I completely forgot it was in the Game Corner. Before I fought Steve in Elite 4, I trained my Pokemon to around or the level cap, so when I fought Steve, there was no trouble at all since his Pokemon were completely under level at this point and his whole team went down to Dragon Dance Gyarados. Alright, first one's Aaron the Bug Trainer. I sat on Hound Doom, it had the metronome that I bought, and I just started blasting with a flamethrower. His Yan Mega went down, his Zero Cross was burnt to a crisp, Vespiquin was sent to the grave, and Sizer sadly got sent out to a times 4 effective flamethrower. The last Pokemon was Drapion, and while not super effective, and I wasn't sure if I could one-shot, I just did it anyway, and it went down without us taking a single scratch. Next is Ground Trainer Bertha. I equipped Gyarados with a Citrus Berry so I can set up with Dragon Dance and be ready for Sandstorm Chip damage. I actually got 3 Dragon Dances off, and I was left at half HP before I started attacking. With Waterfall, I one-shot Wishcash, Golem, Rhyperior, Gliscor, and Hippowdon. And while I did tank some damage, Setting up was just another easy win. Next up is the Elite Form member Flint, the fire type guy, Faulkner's friend. So I decided to give him a bit of what Faulkner had with Gyarados. He posed a bit of an issue though, because he had status and super effective moves, so I couldn't really set up with Gyarados, but that's why I bought the metronome. I decided to start with the waterfall straight away and take out Houndoom and Infernape really easily. But I got to Magmortar and I felt a little bit intimidated, because I wasn't sure if I one-shot, but I go for it, and it goes down. Flareon is easy, and Rapidash goes down in one hit too. Alright, so the final lead form member is Psychic-type. For this, I focused on using Weavile with black glasses. I wanted to set up a few sword dances against Mr. Mime, because I knew he would be setting up, but it hit me with a Thunderbolt for some reason, so I took some damage. I got to half HP. And I didn't want to risk using any more Swords Dances, so I only used it twice. And Night Slash took down Mr. Mayan. Gallade came in, and I wasn't sure if I was going to kill it because it wasn't super effective. And Reflect from earlier was still up, but funnily enough, I managed to take it down. The next thing was Bronzong, so I switched to Honchkrow because I wanted to bait out an Earthquake. And I knew it wouldn't deal much damage because it doesn't have anything super effective against Honchkrow. After that, I switched to Houndoom because I don't expect an Earthquake on a Flying type. And yes, while I take a bit of damage, I can still one-shot with a flamethrower. I know Alakazam is super fast when it switches in, and it has Focus Blast for my super effective dark types, so I switch over to Gyarados to tank a bit, and use Waterfall for physical damage because Alakazam has really weak physical defenses. Finally, Espeon comes out and doesn't get one-shot. In fact, it takes three attacks, and the last one crit, which is pretty strange. Never thought of um, Espeon being much of a tank. Ah, Cynthia, the strongest trainer. The strongest trainer in the franchise for me, to be completely honest, as well. My setup for this was Gyarados. 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 Gyarados would set up on Spirit Tomb with Dragon Dance, as it had nothing to stop it and no status moves. And so, because of that, I just put a Citrus Berry on the Gyarados. Two Dragon Dances in, and my Citrus Berry activates. So... 
On the third, I'm left with 77 HP, so I decided to just go all in here. I waterfall spirit tomb down, and my main concern with Gyarados is Ice Fang, which has a very small chance to miss, and if it misses, especially against Togekiss, we go down. Luckily though, it doesn't miss, and we take down Togekiss. Next is Lucario, who easily we just take down with an Earthquake, and Garchomp is next. And just like Togekiss, I'm hoping we don't miss. Even here, I thought about switching to Weavile since I know it won't use Earthquake, but it looks like we don't need to, because I one shot in anyway. Milotic is next, and I use Earthquake. It goes down. Last is Roserade, and I end up winning and defeating Cynthia! Oh, What a run. I'm gonna be real, this is a crazy run. Though technically, I didn't beat it because of the first gym. With enough time, it would have been done. And I just want to get videos out consistently, so yeah. To be honest, without Gyarados, that would have been insane. I can't believe my first Nuzlocke success was with a themed run as Cyrus. And I'm going to be completely real here as well. That was a lot of luck to be had. For example, I didn't get crit one shot during the setups. And I wasn't randomly killed in the middle of nowhere like last run. So thanks for tuning in and we'll see what the next challenge is.